I call to order this regular meeting of the Navasota Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Navasota for October 26, 2023. If you have not already silenced your cell phones, please do so at this time. And if everyone would please rise for the invocation and the pledge. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening once again to conduct business for this beautiful city in which we live. Guide us in the decisions that we make. Uh, protect our nation during this time of discourse in the Middle East. We ask that you especially be with the people of Israel and our troops who are being sent overseas. All this we ask through Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remarks of visitors. Do we? Yes, sir. Everybody's here to speak on an agenda item. So that brings us to agenda item number four. Conduct a public hearing for the purpose of receiving public comments and testimony regarding a preliminary plat replat submitted by JCLB Investments LLC for the development of a 15 lot single dwelling unit subdivision, a use permitted within the Dove Crossing PUD. The property affected is located along Dove Crossing Lane, Navasota, Grimes County, Texas 77868, legally described as Dove Crossing Block 7, Lot 3, Acres 5.04. And we will open this public hearing at 6.02 p.m. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Planning and Zoning Commission, I do not see the applicant here yet. I don't know if they're running behind with the rain. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to move that item to the end or just conduct it without the applicant here. Uh, but they are aware of the meeting. They did confirm they're coming, but maybe they're running a little behind. Do we have anybody here that would speak at the public hearing from Dove Crossing? No, sir. Let's move it to the end. If they don't show, we don't move. So we can do that, right? Move yeah. it to the end of the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can just disregard opening the public hearing until after okay. the last item. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> we can't act on agenda item number five either. Correct. Yeah, I would just maybe Four just Four and five straight. are moved after um, seven and six. Or seven or six. Yep. After six or after seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that brings us to item number six, presentation, discussion, and possible action on a preliminary site plan submitted by AAKAS LLC for the development of a hotel, a permitted use under the property B1 General Business Zoning District. The property affected is located at 9313 State Highway 6 in Navasota, Grimes County, Texas, 77868. Legally described as Dove Crossing Lakeview Center, Block 1, Lot 5A, Acres 2. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, Planning and Zoning Commission, just a brief overview. Uh, we've been working uh, with Mr. Patel and his partners, uh, as well as the engineering firms involved, for uh, quite some time now. It's been it's been quite the journey to get here. Um, we know the the drainage, uh, past drainage issues in Dove Crossing. So, of course, we take every project in this area, um, you know, not not more serious than any other, but we definitely take an extra extra set of eyes just to make sure the drainage is accounted for. Um, the, the preliminary site plan was, was reviewed in accordance with all applicable codes uh, and regulations as well as a drainage report. Um, they, they provided an a engineered stamped drainage report and this is, this is required when you have areas of unstudied flood zone. And so uh, they were unlucky. The, the last FEMA flood, st uh, flood study ended right before their property. Um, and so most of their property was an unstudied area. And so that, that required 
or necessitated the, the engineer drainage study. And so they've done so. Uh, that report has been reviewed uh, and approved. And so I know that they have uh, someone from each firm here present if you'll have any questions on anything. Um, but overall, they did a great, a great job on the design. Um, it's definitely going to alleviate uh, some drainage issues and definitely take care of their additional water. So. <clears throat> Can you pull up the drainage map, mm -hmm. please? The the site plan, uh, the drainage seat, or the drainage report? C5. Oh, C5, okay. All right. <clears throat> being funneled out to the feeder road? Eventually, yes. Uh, the, the current layout is, is basically there's almost like a, I don't know how you describe it, I'm not an engineer, but, but like a moat around the entire site right. where all the water spills into coming off from, from neighboring properties and then they all get fed to the pond out front. How are, uh, they, get, how are they getting the water from the neighboring properties when it looks like they're going to build it up a foot? <coughs> Well, again, that's that's what it appears to uh, un, untrained, un unengineered eye. But maybe uh, Trevor can can kind of summarize that. <clears throat> can you? Would you please, please come to the podium? Sure. Good evening. My name is Trevor Brown, and I'm with Kimley Horn. Uh, I was hired on this project to do a floodplain study, so I kind of looked at things from a macro perspective. So there's some micro questions, so I can speak to that in general. But Lokesh here is the one who did the on-site design for that. So in general, if you were to raise a site, you're exactly right, sir, you would push the water onto the neighbors. Here, it looks like we've got a swale on the perimeter that will pick up the drainage that comes to the site, take it to the pond, and then there's a piped outfall that takes it down south to that uh, standing water pond, that lake. And then from there, water rises in the lake and then it goes through that textile culvert. That pipe too. Mm -hmm. Is that restrained, Pat? Two. Yeah. Okay. Yes. From their retention to Pat two. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that makes sense now. It's hard to see it from the map. So everything running to it's going to be caught in a swale and run around and put into the same pond, detent pond. Yeah, yes, sir. So the, the capacity for the detent pond is built off of the surrounding area as well as the two-acre plot. So my my understanding of the like again, I I wasn't. I understand. On. So th my understanding of this design is the pond is intended to capture all of the on-site water that hits the site and goes to the pond. The water that used to go through the site is being picked up in the swales, taken through the pond and around, just to mimic existing conditions. So it's not going into the pond. It would be going around the pond. It may overtop a swale. I, it depends on what event we're looking at. Well, there's no, there's no catches that put it into the detention pond. Mm. If it, if it gets onto the side, there's, there's inlets that would have pipes that would take it to the detention pond. On the two sides? Yeah, it's both on the north and south side. Um, I can speak more to the analysis that we did, if that helps give context to kind of the bigger picture and how it affects the neighbors, kind of on a, on a bigger picture. Here's one inlet, and then here's another. Okay, so it does. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah that'd be great. Uh, this is the first time we've had this kind of water analysis. None of us are engineers, um, but I appreciate the volume of data here. And... Um, there's some interesting things. Uh, I guess one thing I would ask is, 
None of you drove out there Monday a couple of weeks ago just to watch the rain, did you? Uh, no. That would have been <laughs> some good information. Okay, were you, were you out there? I wasn't out there, oh. but I was in town. I, I mean, you know, we had, and then I'm, I'm looking at um, your PF graphical here on duration times and average occurrences and looking at how often we get three inches of rain in three hours because that's what we got that day, more or less. And I can walk through the whole report if, if you'd like that. Or I, I'm nerdy and I like this, but I appreciate it. No, uh, <laughs> so yeah. like you don't. I'm nerdy you too. Don't. I'm just not an engineer. Um, so, what did you see as your biggest concern when, as you did this analysis? In general, for floodplain, we look at, at two things. One is storage. So, in a, in a floodplain, in general, you have water that rises in a in a source like a creek. And then there's a main conveyance path. So that's typically designated as a floodway, mm -hmm. where there's lots of conveyance. And then you're kind of on the edges. That's the floodplain where it holds storage. So on this site, I think the original plan, we didn't know that there was floodplain there. So they didn't, it wasn't considered. But once we realized there was floodplain there, we, we, were made, we made sure we, we calculated all the existing storage that ponds up on the side of this site. So we're not in the floodway. We're kind of on the fringe. So we looked at, in a 100-year event, how much water stays on the site today, undeveloped. Once we got that calculation, we looked at, in proposed conditions, when we grade this site, we made sure it was low near the floodplain site so that it holds at least the amount of water that it did before in a 100-year event. So that's what we did the first check to make sure that the volume is good. And then we took what's called a hydraulic model, a HEC-RAS model, and we modeled the creek itself just to make sure we weren't impacting conveyance, and we showed no rise. 0, 0.00 feet. So we take it down to the width of a credit card and we make sure it doesn't, doesn't show a rise anything beyond that. So if it does flood out here, it's not, it's not from this. Up to the 100 year event. <laughs> well, one, of, well, one of the things that I've been discussing with other engineers is the way the data is generated, we're always dealing with, with the NOAA data and what happens in 100 years. That's not what flash flooding is. And there's no data that represents flash floods. And that's our biggest concern when it comes to, I have no question that the slope, the swale, the D10 pond, and the hardscape, and the grading will tolerate the volume that occurs in 24 or 48 hours in a 2, 10, 15, 20, 100 year flood. My problem is what happens when we have these huge deluges that aren't calculated by heck models, right? And, and I, I, you know, I, I need some assurances from gentlemen like you that say, well, we've done enough of this to know that this, this should be able to absorb that kind of flash as well. I think Lakesh can speak more to that, but the on-site design typically is done with a, a methodology called the rational method. And so it looks at something like, I don't know what design you did for the on-site, but if you did the 10-year design, that may be 8 inches per hour. So that's, that's quite intense. Okay, yeah. So it would capture, typically on a site, it's, it's designed to capture um, what's generated on the site. Now, if stuff runs off the site, that's what the swells are for. Right. Okay. So we looked at it kind of macro level as well.
you got up there for nothing, apparently. <laughs> I appreciate the support. <laughs> Lupe, what are the adjacent the adjacent properties? Uh, so to the south, you have Comfort Inn. Uh, to the west, you have the uh, mechanic shop. North, it's a pasture. And then to the east, you have a few single-family homes from Dove Crossing, part of that original phase. <clears throat> But that's quite a distance from there. The well, they are going to share the a fence line, so oh, okay, the okay. the privacy fence, yeah. But they did orient the hotel, you know, as furthest away possible from the from the subdivision. There's actually a, a through access on the site, uh, and that's uh, fire emergency access only. So there'll be a Knox box gate there. A uh, white wing? Mm-hmm. So it won't be through traffic, but just in the event that it needs a secondary access. That's when they initially applied for it. Okay. <clears throat> so as it sits undeveloped now, there is flooding issues at the mechanic shop or not? Uh, I think uh, historically that, that driveway, there, I mean, it, it's you know shown on the report, there's a lot of water that flows through here from uphill. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's always been quite a bit of water crossing through there. Um, you know, obviously the objective behind these reports and studies and designs is if there's three inches of water on the road today, then there's probably going to be three inches on the road tomorrow after this is done, but not, not four, right, or five. Right. Um, and so the, the provided report and the plans, uh, you know, at least reflect that. <clears throat> The fallacy to that is we're not making anything better. We're just keeping it the same. Well, you know, I think just just from a uh, like a small typical rain, I think that will improve somewhat because it is going to catch maybe not the 500-year event storm, but you know your quick little rains we get here now and then. I think you're going to see a lot less water on that main entrance um, compared to before. Um, so it's helping the smaller scale stuff, but the big stuff. I mean, you know, once you have eight hours of nonstop rain. All, all ground turns to concrete because they can't absorb any more water. So um, it, it's at least going to help out those, those smaller storms. <clears throat> so I have a, a, a question. At our last meeting, we were told by an engineer that they couldn't use the flood report Help me, Todd. The HEC data analysis. Yeah, HEC data analysis because it it wasn't for our area. Like the soils. Are... So. Couldn't tell you, Randy. Okay. That's, that's flying real high above my head. <laughs> so for this study, there was some old data from the 80s uh, that wasn't available in g digital format. So what we did is we cut that off about 2,000 feet downstream of the of the of the textile road. And then we made, did all new data from there. Okay. Upstream. That's okay. how we did it. So we so tied into the original, but we used the best available data to get to that point. Okay. That helps greatly. Lupe, you said you had somebody review their analysis? Yes. Yes. Uh, our, our third party firm, which is actually Kimley Horn, but a different division. Um, so it's a, it's a separate, um, I don't know how they divide it by districts, basically. But You guys are a big firm. Yes. We have like 6,000 people. 
It's crazy. <laughs> I believe it was my colleagues in Dallas that reviewed. I wasn't allowed to talk to them. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. That seemed to be a little bit of COI. <laughs> And Patu Pond is large enough to handle them feeding from their detention. You know, I, I think in uh, in terms of design, it's 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 not supposed to be adding any additional. That's it's already because <coughs> that's where it was going anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was already crossing that driveway and just pouring in there. So. Um, So most of the water is being moved across the surface and then to um, grates at the end to dump into the detent pond? Or are there grates throughout the parking? It's hard for me to tell on this. No, it's actually uh, surface flow to It's the, all surface flow to the two, to to the the two inlets. Uh, we actually have that, uh, the entire site, there's a swell throughout the okay. entire perimeter of okay. it. And that's mostly a, that's mostly a, a construction it. cost thing instead of bearing a bunch of lines rather than to have that's it. Right. Yeah. That plus the mitigation as well to lower. Keep the site low. So that in the floodplain when that happens it can still store water on the site. Oh okay, right. I got you. Anything else, Todd? No, I mean, you know, I, you got to trust the software and the engineers here. I mean, you have anything? I don't think so. Okay. No? Mm -hmm. right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.
I move that we approve the preliminary site plan submitted by AKAS LLC for the development of a hotel permitted use under the property's B1 General Business Zoning District. Property effect is located at 9313 State Highway 6 in Navasota, Grimes County, Texas 77868, legally described as Dove Crossing, Lakeview Center, Block 1, Lot 5A, Acres 2. We have a motion from Commissioner Barchek. Second it. Second from Commissioner Kikowski. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by stating aye. 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 See no opposition, the motion carries. And that brings us back to agenda item number four. Yes. Conduct a public hearing for the purpose of receiving public comments and testimony regarding a preliminary plat replat submitted by JCLB Investments LLC for the development of a 15 lot single dwelling unit subdivision, a use permitted within the Dove Crossing PUD. The property affected is located along Dove Crossing Lane, Navasota, Grimes County, Texas, 7786 legally described as Dove Crossing Block 7, Lot 3, Acres 5.04. And we'll call this um, public hearing to order at 627. <coughs> the floor is yours. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Planning and Zoning Commission, just going to give you a quick background. Um, this uh, proposed preliminary plat, uh, or this specific property, uh, went through the PUD zoning process uh, earlier this year. Uh, the PUD, uh, with the design uh, outlining here today with the development standards, was approved on May 8, 2023, by uh, City Council. And so, um, just for a brief overview, the preliminary plat is approving the general layout and location of all public improvements. Uh, so this project is a little bit behind the last item that was just voted on. Uh, we're still working with the developer on getting all those drainage figures, uh, infrastructure plans. Uh, so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit behind there. But in terms of the layout, uh, this is in accordance with the PUD document that was approved in May. Um, in terms of layout, uh, we did receive a, a very a very preliminary version of, of what they're looking at in terms of drainage um, this afternoon, where basically most of that common area that's almost three acres is, is going to be somewhat of a pond. Um, I mean, there's not, there's not a lot of use for it just because of the flood zone, uh, and they obviously want to avoid putting anything in the middle of it. So um, JC is here tonight. If you all have any questions, he's the uh, owner of the project. And so um, if you have any questions specifically about the layout or anything that, that you see, um, I can help, and so can JC. I think their I think their engineers will probably like to see the report from the first project. Probably, <laughs> <clears throat> if you pay them. That's right. <laughs> engineers only one can screw something up and then charge you to fix it twice. So that's, that's <laughs> But uh, we were having an argument back there. I don't know if it was y'all or the council members where we were late to the last meeting, but only by five minutes, the last one, too. But uh, <laughs> was he, I don't know if y'all even remember that. It might have been y'all. Well, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> this time, it's funny because she picked me up 15 it. minutes early, <laughs> and we were still five minutes late, but this time it's because of the rain. You so, know, next you know, time, was, leave 30 minutes early. Yes, sir. Well, we apologize. <laughs> I told, I told Lupe outside, I said, they must do the Pledge of Allegiance about five minutes before six o'clock. So <laughs> I, I apologize for that. So no, thank y'all. We try to make this quick. But uh, John, uh, the engineer, I believe, and with Navasota and Bill Colin have been working back and forth, and, and of course with Lupe. But y'all have an engi uh, engineer on staff now. So there's been a lot of communications back and forth between uh, you know, our engineers to, to tighten this deal up. I know there's been some issues in the past on, on drainage, but, you know, our biggest um, hope for this is that, uh, one, we're not going to bring any more water on to the issues that are already in place, and, and maybe there could be something in the future that could help alleviate some of the problems with the track that we have. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for. Now, we're not at that point yet. Once again, this is just a preliminary plat for a layout. This is not a construction design. Uh, by all means of, of saying we're starting construction. We have no um, approvals to do anything at this time. We have to get through, of course, uh, John and, 
in in Lupe and then everybody to make sure that everything uh, meets y'all's needs. So, but as far as layout, it's pretty black and white. There's really not much else you can do to it with the approvals we got uh, through PNZ and Council. At the I, I believe what we do is five thousand, mm -hmm. but we had a P or a yeah a, PUD. A, a, that's mm -hmm. right. To get to forty five. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's how the layout is is what it is. Um, and do you have that email I just sent you? Uh, yes, I had it. Three minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get out of your yard quick. Uh, you're referring to the one that shows the possible pond? Is that what yes, you're sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know we're not even there yet. We're kind of putting the cart before the horse, but it, it's good to see. Uh, last thing I want is any... Train outside. Of course, we don't want extra water, but we want the water. <clears throat> so this is just a cut sheet or a sheet in his construction drawings that just shows the drainage proposal. It doesn't show how it is and how the detention pond and the depths and things like that. He's close. I believe in the next few weeks, uh, John, the city, and Lupe, everybody will get these full set of drawings. Uh, but that takes care of the white wing, which is to everyone's left and right to the gentleman on the right. <laughs> I guess you'd say that's the, that's the west side or the, yeah. the northwest. So that takes care of the water from the white wing subdivision. And it's kind of on its own. Project down to your, I guess, south. I guess you just go, I'm going to call it south. That'll just drain into the sub, to the flood area that's behind it and into the bar ditch in the front. And we've got culvert designs and everything uh, to keep that flow consistent with what's already out there. There's a ditch against that street now, is that yes, what sir. you're saying? Okay. There's a canal that runs. Uh, yes, sir, a little okay, further here's up. The right here, yes, sir. Channel. Yeah. You know, I guess that was supposed to take care of all the water when that got put in years and years back. Mm -hmm. But it does, it does not. No. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm putting the cart before the horse again. There's been discussions had with John and, and love to sit down with city manager and, and, and talk about the extra property that we have. It's useless to us. You know, there's nothing there that's going to help us but cause problems for anyone downstream. So if there's anything that could be done with that track in between those two dark black lines that could help the city alleviate some downstream problems. We're, we're definitely willing to work with y'all and uh, help help take care of them and alleviate some problems that, that may be ongoing. So once again, this is just a plat, just for a layout. Uh, we'll work through those details in the near future. Is that correct? Do back to yes, sir. Yeah. That. No, absolutely. Yeah, this is uh, just establishing what the final it. approved construction drawings should reflect. And so, you know, there's there's room for, hey, where's that, you know, where's that inlet box to the pond going to be? Those are minor engineering changes that can happen at the staff level with construction drawings. Uh, but in terms of the layout itself, uh, this is uh, this is in accordance with the PUD standards. And and, and the PUD was for 4,500 square foot lots and mm -hmm. 15 units. And yeah, it even describes, you know, 10 near White Wing, 5 along Dove Crossing. So it's just... You know, it's a very tricky, tricky uh, property. You know, the neighbors to the to the east ran into similar issues with drainage. They <laughs> they have a whole, whole lot uh, more. It's still <laughs> it's, it's still on hold. Um, but uh, you know, in terms of drainage, what we're going to want here is just uh, how wide truly is that is that FEMA flood zone? Um, if you can get it accurate, and then what's the depth? Just to make sure that especially the homes along Dove Crossing that they're not going to have water. Uh, and I'm in a big storm. Um, the ones along White Wing, that's out of the flood zone. Um, it's it's on, it's up on the hill. Um, so the, really the main focus is going to be uh, the, the lots on. The five units down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a, you can call it a ditch. It's, it's more like a very, very limited defined swale along Dove Crossing. I think the original design of the subdivision was for all of these to just sheet flow. Uh, most of the really defined ditches and culverts are on the south side of Dove Crossing Lane. So that's why they put that channel in thinking that was going to take care of all the all the water, but obviously it didn't. 
you know, you could see a few of them homes that were built in the subdivision to this further down. I don't know where that would be. You, of course, you got residence names on them. They were built underneath a finished floor elevation or, you know, that to be out of the floodplain so water goes around their homes. You mm -hmm. know, uh, to the south, I'll call it, below the black line, we, we won't allow any homes to be built into or encroach that black line. We'll make sure we're out of the FEMA flood line and still have a finished floor elevation. So to protect our five homes, uh, I, I believe that that will take care of them. Now, the downstream issues at hand, I, I, you know, those are still there. Hopefully that little in between black line in the future we may can work something out with navsoda to to help to help fix problems downstream um and now in loop a i don't know in the construction drawings if i can for deed restrictions even you know do i define that those, those lots cannot be built within that finished floor or that floodplain area mm -hmm. and just just note that so the fema floodplain we're not going to build within that area, and we'll still have a finished floor to go to. So, you know, these lots over here that folks are living in now are in the floodplain in the finished floor. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't see doing that. So we'll definitely keep ourselves out of that floodplain area. There's plenty of room for that. Thank you all very much, You're and welcome. I apologize. Thank you. 30 more minutes, we'll get there. <laughs> <clears throat> Anything else? I mean, it's just the flat. Yeah. So we'll, we'll close the public hearing at 637. And that brings us to agenda item number five, presentation, discussion, and possible action on a preliminary, preliminary plat, replat submitted by JCLB Investments LLC for the development of a 15-lot single-dwelling unit subdivision, a use-permitted Within the Dove Crossing PUD, the property affected is located along Dove Crossing Lane, Navasota, Grimes County, Texas, 77868, and is legally described as Dove Crossing Block 7, Lot 3, Acres 5.04. Chairman, I move we approve the submitted preliminary plat by JCLB Investments for the properly legal de described as Doug Cross Doug Crossing, Block 7, Lot 3, Acres 5.04. I have a motion from Commissioner Wisner to approve the preliminary plat. I'll second it. A second from Commissioner Kutowski. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Seeing no opposition, the motion carries. And that brings us to agenda item number seven. Consideration of possible action on approval of the meeting minutes for the October 12, 2023 meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the meeting minutes for the October 12, 2023 meeting as presented. We have an, a, a motion from Commissioner Barczyk to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Second from Commissioner Kukowski. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Motion carries. And to that, we will adjourn at 6.40 p.m.